One of the most confusing areas in IVF today is that of PGT, which is also known as PGD or PGS. It's a bit of a mouthful, I agree with you, but basically PGD stands for pre-implantation genetic testing, PGD stands for pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, and PGS stands for pre-implantation genetic screening. They all pretty much mean the same thing, and as the name suggests, it's genetic tests done on the embryo before we transfer the embryo into the uterus, which is before it implants. Now, the logic of doing all these tests is very seductive. After all, we know that some embryos are genetically abnormal and that these embryos will not implant when we transfer them into the uterus. So why not test these embryos before transferring them so that we can select only the genetically normal embryos so that when we put it back in the uterus, the chance of it implanting increases. Makes a lot of logical sense, no question about it. But you know what the tragedy is? That doctors don't tell patients the truth about the limitations of these tests. And they're full of limitations. And it's not just that the test is a very expensive test or that the test is very complicated because, you know, patients will pay the money and doctors are very happy to do the test because they can charge an arm and a leg for it. So that if an IVF cycle costs two lakhs, doing a PGD will cost you three lakhs more. Now, if it did increase your chance, I'd say it's fine, pay that three lakhs more, it doesn't matter. But the bitter truth is it doesn't. Let me explain to you why. The truth is actually PGD decreases your chance of getting pregnant after IVF. And this is true for multiple reasons. For one, the test has lots of limitations. Remember that all we can do on the test when we're doing PGD is aneuploidy screening, which means we can test for the number of chromosomes that embryo has which means we can pick up the embryos with an abnormal number of chromosomes, but there are only 23 pairs of chromosomes, whereas there are 30,000 genes, which means a lot of embryos which are PGD normal will actually still have lethal genetic defects, which will cause them to arrest and not allow them to implant, which means even though you've done a PGD, you've not made sure that that embryo is genetically normal. This is not something which doctors will share with you because this is one of the limitations of our technology and we can't overcome that as yet. But I think what's even worse is a lot of embryos die as a result of the embryo biopsy process. Again, something most doctors won't tell you, but this is a technically challenging, complex procedure, which lots of embryologists aren't good at doing and they end up killing the embryo and they don't tell you that because obviously they're not going to be truthful about it. What's even worse is that a lot of the testing is flawed. Sometimes the results are ambiguous. Sometimes the results are inaccurate. Sometimes the wrong cell is sent to the lab. Sometimes the results can't be interpreted properly, but because the genetic testing is done in a different lab and the embryo biopsy is done in a different lab, the communication between the two breaks down. And sadly, there is no documentation of the embryo biopsy procedure, which means sometimes I wonder really what these doctors are doing and whether they're actually doing these tests at all. And finally, the worst thing, is that we finally realized that the problem with PGD is that embryos are alive, which means actually even though the PGD test may be abnormal, and the reason it may be abnormal is because you can't sample the whole embryo. You can't remove all the cells of the embryo. You're only sampling two or three or four cells of a 100 cell embryo if you're doing a blastocyst biopsy. And even if those cells are abnormal, the rest of the embryo may be completely normal because of a phenomenon called mosaicism which means the PGD test is abnormal, but you've ended up throwing away a completely normal embryo, which would have implanted if you hadn't done the test, which is a huge tragedy. And don't forget, because these are live embryos, they can often self-correct. So that before you say yes to doing an additional expensive PGD test, just because your first IVF cycle failed, please do your homework. If you have any doubts or questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'm Dr. Malpani. I offer a free second opinion on our website, www.drmalpani.com. No ax to grind. It's free. No strings attached. And we look forward to helping you to have a baby.